and we should try to address these things and bring how much this open water can supplement for the growth of this sector. And we are trying to coordinate last two, three years, we have a state level action plan uh, calling, uh, uh, working with the directors, secretaries and ministers also sometimes and coordinating on the training, HRD, all these two increasings. So these are the, we have to see how best we can require. These are the, if we work on that, what is the requirement from the open water? We have calculated based on the addressing in the train water, at how much. If we see Assam and Monipur, you are required this much hectare of pens also. Then for that, if you have a CDJ major constraint, again, if you have a required site, so you require brooders and feed mills, all we have based on the potentials for the enriching the open water fisheries. We have a roadmap and calculated for the states uh, wise from the all states. Again, all with all this, if we see, we have threats, means demand of water. There is a cross-sectional use, water for irrigation first, then go for the fish cultures. Then again, most of the rivers, other thing, we do not maintain the environmental flow. Again, if we'll see entry of exotic fish without any regulations, we last year we studied the impact of exotics, tilapia mostly in the Assam also, we recommended it. If it is a biosecurity measure, so other things, monotheric tilapia can be advised in those regions, but those areas should not advise when there is a constant flood and other things, it will escape in the natural water bodies and will cause certain type of detrimental effects. Again, today also eutrophication is a major challenges. So again, we should see this flood plain wetlands, other things, what is the traffic stack index and again, the management and the siltation is also. So these are then, again, we are talking about so much pollutions today. We have to see again, your hilly terrain, climatic conditions, then demand of fish is increasing. And if you will see there is small size, indiscriminate fishing also small size and wanted killing. So these are the some of these practices and we have the technology like cage culture, pen culture, then community-based fisheries development, fish production from reservoirs and cage grow feed and electronic data systems, eat atlas that can be helped for this. If you will see today, if you can monitor and then we can achieve the target of the production as you invite at least 1000 kg from the bill fishers because for last three or 10 years, we are working with the bill fisheries as the government of Assam made a definite policy. Therefore, from 400 kg of production from bill fisheries, it has gone up to 700 kg also. So these are the, we have a roadmap, we have prepared for the Northeastern sectors. Then we have some uh, like GIS, we have completed the three states in Northeastern. Assam is one season, deliberation has been completed. So this water bodies mapping could help for the management and planning of these things. Again, we have a wetland management models where we can, with a, this model, you can, we have done for the one six wetlands of the Assam and we have the data generated and given to the AFDC and Assam Fisheries Department. So these are the uh, aspect that we are working with this different means. This time we trained also from the cage culture for the Tripura personnel, Nagaland. So these are the constantly we are working for the development. Again, if we'll see how we can have a development, like if we'll see culture-based fisheries, one of the things, most of the small reservoirs and wetlands that can be a stock enhancement or culture-based fisheries. Again, diversification of fisheries activity. Like again, if a ranching of rivers for the without uh, seeing the, it should not be contaminated with the germplasm, hatchery inbreeds. So there should be specific, or we have a definite fish centuries, breeding ground for conservations, for auto recruitments, then standarding the delivery mechanisms, then cooperative society and governance. And financial support is once insurance is also another aspect which should be looked into for broad development. Again, uh, I told just like a cluster base or satellite farming, a specific seed hatcheries requirement for these things and regulations mostly because as you know, fisheries is a state tractor, so we will only uh, find we will be uh, acting as a bridging this state governments need HRD all these things. Again, marketing is also one concern, though Northeast is 
they're not that much because if you'll see the seed and other things goes from the mainland when it reaches there the price has gone up so again the cost of production increases and conservations restoring the connecting the channels between the rivers and wetlands so see the flow maintenance and the diversity increases and linkages between institutions and farmers and hrd is one of the things and both hrd for the entrepreneurs officers and the fisher folk also again emphasis on the high value table fish like you know your pabda and other things which more important for the north and we should have a specific hatchery and specific attentions so with this i finish my talk thank you thank you thank you thank you very much <clears throat> you are on time actually any question any anybody somebody had raised hands three participants any questions no i think uh, it was a good thing i know you were you know working together with the northeastern states <clears throat> and we also depend very much on sifri's technology association <coughs> and all that okay thank you sir thank you very much thank dr you. darcy thank you sir thank you thank you now i think we have uh, professor p k sahaji who is uh, behind the scene of yeah. this particular na uh, pk sahaji will be speaking rk sahas rk sorry sorry okay, <laughs> sorry. okay no problem no problem rk sahaji i think you will be talking on transboundary diseases yeah right? yeah surveillance mainly sir mainly surveillance yeah okay. so uh, good afternoon to everybody respected uh, our uh, uh, chairman sir and uh, that and uh, dr jena sir then dr dash and all the uh, speakers i will be talking about the uh, this surveillance program in northeastern region for combating the uh, your uh, transboundary aquatic animal diseases uh, in india uh, that is the need of the hours the northeast india so this is actually a uh, already we experience that uh, we know that northeast has a boundary with uh, sporous boundary mainly nepal bhutan bangladesh myanmar and china and uh, you see that uh, there are more than we can say now 500 uh, km near 500 km is their international border and there are so many important biodiversity is there but we have experienced in the last that uh, your uh, that uh, in this uh, part of india in tripura is the first time uh, epigeotic ulcerative disease syndrome has been um, uh, has been found and it is a huge economic losses and also we have seen this is, this is the condition of the fishes that time i am also witnessed of that dr our dilip kumar sir is there i think i was also involved in the collection of uh, this uh, disease fish sir also came that time in tripura first time in tripura in india 1988 the this uh, ulcerative disease syndrome was found but uh, this uh, disease actually uh, came from you can say i will talk about that first then other parts it is i am not touching in india it is the first time but this disease actually first occurred in japan in 1971 and then later on in australia you see that how it came first in japan next in australia then in uh, in other places it came Mal uh, malaysia then again indonesia then your thailand vietnam and then china then again you see that cambodia then philippines then your sri lanka then in bangladesh it came subsequently bangladesh in tripura it came with during the flood situation in may and june during that time this uh, it was ultimately spread over in the, uh, in india and also in the pakistan you see now there are 26 countries asia specific countries are involved in that 
uh, this disease are witness. And now Tripura is the first report in India and Asham, Manipur and other state also, Arunachal also it has been found and other in, uh, in plain land also it has been found. It has been found that more than 100 species, fish species, mainly freshwater and brackish water uh, fishes are affected. And uh, this is actually a red spot disease. And ultimately it has been named, it's in Japan, but it has been uh, found that it has been not only the, uh, your, it has been ultimately found that it is a uh, fungal disease, but it has been ultimately associated with different uh, other diseases. So far it has been, case definition has been there, for this US, but it has not been changed as because it is well known by the all the farmers, all everybody that this is a epigeotic ulcerative disease. It is a, in that time we talk about that it is a Mohamari disease. And in Tripura, particularly I have seen that all the markets is locked down, totally locked down. And there was a uh, radio announcement and then no TV was there and news flash is there, don't take any fish like that. It was a havoc was there and severe. Uh, and then again, this one, again, it comes with less severity in the next come, uh, two, three years. Again, now it is there, still it is there, but that severity is not there. When you see the impact of that, biodiversity impact, biodiversity loss is there, social impact was there. So much of labor by income as loss is there in economic in, uh, impact was there. I'm not going into that detail. So this is also, you see that uh, in different places, in rural area also that 35% prepared to eat that, but in uh, urban area, don't, they don't, take, don't, don't want to take. These are the, and again, it is now available also, I told. So you see that in 2005, six, I have make a model I have presented in the uh, Agri Expo in the Northeast in Dimapur, fish hospital. Then our now present our chancellor, uh, also the ex DG, DG uh, uh, Ayapan sir was also visited. Then he commented me from where you have got that concept. So I have told that is my uh, conceptual model it should come up in reality is good that he has appreciated. Now we are a witness also aqua clinic, all these things are coming up and why surveillance? That's why we have no surveillance in position. That's why we are in a problem in the fisheries sector mainly uh, that surveillance program, if it is there, we can monitor, we can immediately take action, preparatory, uh, uh, we can preparedness, we can there but it was not there. That's why we suffered in the fisheries health, uh, problem. And that means if surveillance was there, hit, uh, health advice, we can get uh, accurate certification of exports. We can get reporting to the international organization also verification of freedom free disease and emergency of the preparedness also we can do. Uh, these are some of how we can have uh, a program was conducted, you know that. Uh, and objectives, I all don't want to uh, discuss all these things, as because you know that uh, fish disease diagnosis, we are still in infancy compared to animal husbandry. And also we need the consortia on fish disease in the Northeast region. And it is the need of the hour. And also, you know that uh, our Deca, uh, your Janasar is knowing how much we have to fight during that 2012 and 13 to get national level surveillance project under the finance by the NB, NBFGR uh, Lucknow. Uh, then again, uh, under the control of that in 2013, uh, coordination was there. You see how much uh, day night we have worked under the leadership of the Dr. Janasar and others. Uh, we worked 2012 and 13, we got the, uh, our, uh, our chancellor also, present chancellor is also a uh, fight for that. It should be there. You see that group of that time during 2013, uh, we are in the group, uh, our uh, Dr. Uh, Madri also is there. From during that time that we have started the program that uh, still our Janasar is the coordinator and also our, um, um, BK Dash also was involved in that. And now we, it is there actually in that uh, we have seen that in the Northeast, we consider only Asham and Tripura. And these are the institutes that are available, uh, engaged in that. And already I talked about that. 
that uh, you see that it is not defined what is the who uh, which will be the aquatic animals in the in our indian gazette so it has been redefined in 2014 that extended the animal and included the aquatic animals that fish mollusks crustacea and amphibians then only we can go ahead for surveillance project then 23 23 diseases has been included we have identified molluscan diseases then crustacean diseases and amphibian diseases also we have identified then it has been uh, notified in the gadget this is very important for running the surveillance in a country so this is again the state level uh, list should be there we have finalized for the um, uh, northeast that 14 fin fish disease and one uh your prawn disease also we have identified and we are doing the surveillance in the uh, tripura college of fisheries i was pi from 2013 and due to my uh, director post i came here i have uh, now up to december i was there 2013 uh, 17 and now himadri is uh, uh, looking after that and during that time i have you know, we have prepared the pamphlet we have distributed in local languages also and also these are the see uh with the uh, surveillance project there are so many diseases are now we are encountering and also some of the diseases are still yet to be identified we have communicated to the uh, nbfgr to confirm all these thing there are so many disease still it is uh, there uh, you see that in a uh, in a uh, single uh, gills how much uh, you can say uh, the parasites are there in that and then you see that these are the different diseases we can see uh, then you see that that your one video is there that is uh, argulus uh, argulosis that is in the gills how much effective in that uh, they are effectively uh, attacking the fish gills then there are there are different deformities also is found in the fishes we have the x ray we have done the x ray and also we examine what why these these uh, your uh, deformities are there and also there are different diseases uh, prevailing now also you see that it is uh, in common water it is uh, collected from the shikim common water your open water there are so many diseases also prevailing uh this is with the first time in india we can say mobile fish clinic we have with the support of our uh, uh, cau uh, we have uh, uh, designed the ac mobile fish clinic still it is working we are with this uh, mobile van we are doing the surveillance work in the different farmers field also we are helping the farmers now they are now all our scientists now they have trained in my uh, they have passed from our college they are all scientists somebody are the Uh, assistant professor now so there there are different diseases you see identifying that you see interesting is the aroma hydrophila but this aroma hydrophila actually not hydrophila it will be dhakaensis x because it is coming from dhaka uh, or you can say in bangladesh so we have to see that which species is that we have to confirm that you see we have to education already told that there are so many fish disease has been fish as dying large scale mortality was there due to eutrophication and this is again first time reported that is macrobrachium noda virus from tripura in hatchery all the uh, your prawn larvae has died and we have identified and also it has communicated to the nbfgr and we have also developed the fish health card to give the farmers Uh, to record all these thing and uh, then also we have developed the uh, prescription for the farmers we have developed the fish health management calendar also and also field guide book we have developed to, so that free of, uh, farmers can get exposed and also we are doing different awareness camp to aware them and recently we have set up the four uh, aquaculture aquatic animal health laboratory has been approved by the nfdb uh, in assam one tripura one in monipur uh, two was there but uh, myself also got one project but i have not yet started as because money has not been received and this the purpose is that to help the farmers in this regard i am not going into that details but we should be five freedom should be there in the uh, disease if you when uh, you do the uh, surveillance then you see the policies and strategies you see you should strengthen the disease surveillance 
for reporting and all those things. And also we can uh, involve or you can so uh, the potential states we should include in that project. Linking of the surveillance project, we have a, now six M4 Agri project is there to have proper dissemination. That is a mobile agro advisory. We can include with that linking with them. Then convergence with the fisheries department, arteries, KVKs, and CR Institute also is very required. There is an immense scope of enforcement of laws is very important. Then documentation and valid ITK. There are so many ITKs are there. Farmers are using for health management. Uh, then aquatic animal for Sochia already I told expert system like animal husbandry. There is expert system management online. You can see and we can get the suggestion and all these things. Then metagenomics that is potential probiotics is required to make maintain the health uh, health condition of the uh, fishes. Then regional viral laboratory is required as because we have to send the viral sample to the uh, other state in the plain land. But in the regional area, we should, uh, in the Northeast, it is required. Climate control, pharmacology, wet lab is required. Regional farm pathogen repository also is very important. Mobile fish clinic, I have already told. Diagnostic uh, unit should be the capacity building is should be there. Quarantine already talked about that that health certification quarantine is should be there in place then species specific probiotic is required and again the hrd that is uh, human resource development is required to handle the disease prevalence in the and prescribing the medicines also nowadays in the in our course we have to put the uh, toxicology pharmacology everything earlier it was not there then we can get the uh, we can prescribe the medicines then contingency plan should be in there in the uh, all the states then para uh, fisheries personnel or para aquaculture should be there good management practice should be followed and bi biosecurity problem is another issue we are using overprint but this overprim, that is salmon gonadotropin hormone and omberidone, it is used for actually develop for the ornamental fish brood stock, not for, uh, you can say, uh, food fish. If you cannot use overprim, we should stop immediately. We should use the, uh, you can say, the PG, that is pituitary gland for breeding. But uh, it is very easy to use overprim. That's why people are using, but we should see then organize regular uh, water <coughs> awareness camp for to biosecurity surveillance and all these things monitoring then post border uh, monitoring system should be there homogeneous uh, homogeneous uh, can say uh, that policy that uh, state level or central level uh, uh, that harmony should be there whatever the policy is there then greater involvement of stakeholders and public pi pi private partnership is the ppp mode is should be required so thank you all for giving me uh, that opportunity and patience here. Sir, please unmute yourself. Uh, sir, please unmute yourself. My sir. Uh, uh, any questions yes. from anybody? Uh, no, I think no, no question. Uh, <clears throat> Sahaji, good, but when you talked about uh, EUS disease, yes, sir. you had you had spent quite some time. Yeah, I remember the disease uh, called UG ninety nine in wheat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that disease had also come almost up to Pakistan. It was to enter yeah. India, but somehow you know because. Somehow it was India could uh, prevent its entry, and we also found lot many resistant UG ninety nine resistant varieties available in India. Later on, lot many works were taken up. Similarly, I saw that was also a fungal disease. Yours is yeah. also a fungal disease. So, <clears throat> so that way, because it covered wide network, you know, then this disease has de definitely to be taken very seriously, because it has traveled through so many countries. Yeah. As regards surveillance, you know, transboundary diseases, let yeah. me tell you, with the support of DBT, Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, uh, when I was there as the Vice Chancellor, we could get a project from the department for animal husbandry sector. 
you know surveillance of transboundary diseases across northeastern region yeah. wherein we had taken each state as a partner the veterinary department of each state uh, together with that we also had national partners right from yeah. ibri to nrc equine and all that so this is still continuing now what i feel in this itself if you add fishery component surveillance of fish diseases yeah. with your fishery experts in that case you will be joining one existing program with little yeah. you know this thing so i think you can think of that and you can get yeah. in touch with them i can also have a word They, yeah. this will be you, you you take your all information separately fishery scientist put in the project i think uh, and some additional funding will be required for fisheries you have to you know have all the contacts and the cooperation collaboration from the state department which is so very vital it was not very easy project because yeah, you, know, yeah, you know you have to be there in the transboundary areas to keep on monitoring as to whether some disease has entered or not similarly i think because tripura is close by to bangladesh yeah. Yeah. and it it immediately you know gets that that kind of thing so i think so, so yeah, yeah something i should say sir yeah. what you have told uh, rightly said it is exactly right actually in 2016 we have conducted this uh, meeting with dbt dbt also came from our uh, your asham also uh, the people came and also there was a deliberation for consortia of fish diseases in uh, northeast india but ultimately the project has not materialized we have so many presentations and we have expert also came in college of fisheries in tripura but uh, dbt assured that it will be uh, your whatever you have uh, sanctioned in your university like that that for fisheries also they committed that it will be uh, financed but ultimately it has yeah, not we, we will take it up again okay sir yes yes, yes. So okay we'll sir take it up again you can now to dr aslam sahab is looking after yeah okay sir yeah okay sir. Uh, we can have a discussion with him yeah. then you know okay, we cannot ignore yes okay. yes yes sir you yes. know that we have to take very seriously but you know your those contribution in terms of leaflets and all other things guide book you know yeah. really very good you know very very okay, impressive sir. thank you sir uh, thank you very much thank you thank you, oh. thank you. I think I think uh, we should go to the next speaker. Uh, who is that? Happy Sahu, H O D and Dean Shipe. Uh, you are here. Sahu yes, sir. I am. I am very yeah. much here, sir. Okay. How are you? Yes, yeah, sir. Fine, sir. Yeah. Still in Mumbai? Yes, sir. Still I am here. Good, good. Mumbai, so very now. So it's now it's not in good condition. Yes. Yeah. Very bad phase. Keep yourself uh, safe, sir. Bujhbura, sir. Yeah. Sir, oh, up, thora, dhire, dhire, chal rahe. Bhot rat ho jayega. Oh, so, the the thing is, jaldi karte, jaldi karte. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, sir. I am just. What kind of indication? No, no. I am just trying to share my. Uh, some of the informations which have already been, you know, shared, you can avoid them. Yes, uh, cream. Cream of your presentation, if you can adhere to it. I don't know why it is not coming. Sharing. Uh, okay. Okay. Sir, now sir, we'll go. Are you visible, sir? Is visible. Uh, you are. You are visible. Slides are visible. Okay. Now it's fine. You can start. Okay. so uh, good afternoon everybody and uh, respected chairman dr badur barwa uh, honorable vice chancellor dr pmg singh from cau uh, honorable ddg dr jaina our ex vice chancellor dr dilip kumar he is there and uh, dr vk das he was there i have seen maybe he has gone for some time uh, and uh, dr vk das dr saha and from aisa uh, asis and tapan Tapas Paul and uh, my previous uh, rest speakers are there. So as I as I have been told that uh, of course it is very easy for me and many of the uh, aspects have been covered 
by dr jaina and my previous speakers so rather i will stick to the some part rather my expertise on the seed aspect i will cover so as the topic is directed about the research in northeast india option and opportunities before going to this aspect let's see this is that some statistics about this northeast the northeast covers almost 7.8% of the total geographical area of the country but at the same time it shares only 3.9% of the population why this less population because total 65% of the area is covered by forest if you see the national level average only in india 21% area is covered by forest but northeast mostly more than 50% is covered by forest but at the same time the cultivable land is in 22% whereas in national average it is 4% so with these resources what is the economics from the northeast so if you see there are per capita availability compared to the uh, national average uh, almost 50% states are their per capita income is more than the national average what i don't know the assam it is 74000 sir i i think that it is it is a, only mathematics that uh, when the population is less obviously we can maintain a good such that's why sikkim is in top so it is almost three times than national average but uh, where the population is more but uh, it is not same for nagaland and meghalaya but four states their national per capita income is more so then let's see how they are getting from this aquaculture aquaculture can contribute with their income so if you compare again to the total water bodies and fish production compared to the national average the total water bodies in northeast it only 5.2% with this 5.2% of the water bodies it contributes a similar percentage 5.4% of this total inland productions i'm telling you the inland productions but if you compare to productivity it is almost 40% of productivity that this is the area you know that is where you can strike that we, we, there is a lot of scope is there to increase the productivity productivity is very very less than national average so this is the area how we will discuss the strategy to increase the productivity now the productivity everything comes from the demand that is the consumption if you see the consumption patterns you see the blue color that relate to fish and the total dominant yellow color is by chicken so total the india you see that even if it dominated by chicken but the northeast east and northeast it is only the fish the fish eating population are dominate in this uh, area that's why uh, beside this only kerala is there fish eating populations that means the scope is there if you can promote fish there is all, all possibilities there that we can earn more then how they are eating the fish it is not uh, i have given the rural and urban populations 53% population that eat mostly fish beside this second position from the pork so this is the almost 95% of the people they eat non veg but mostly fish second is the pork then coming to the yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh. coming to this okay coming to total the fish consumption three states only arunachal pradesh assam and tripura they are consuming more than the national average that is 10 kg but rest of the five states that is manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland they are consuming very less coming to nagaland sikkim mizoram is very very less 1 kg or 2 kg or in a year manipur meghalaya they are consuming 5 kg so this is the point this is the area that whenever we discuss the northeast states they consume more but really in some states they consume more meat than the fish so either they don't like fish or they want a different taste of fish that also you think now comparing the inland fish production and consumption we we have presume that if there is a more uh, demand definitely they should try to produce more so i have given a ranking so in, obviously tripura is the highest producing in productivity per kg hectare productivity tripura produces the highest accordingly the uh, consumption also highest in tripura similarly two position assam assam produce more due to its possess last uh, vast water bodies but the productivity in case of assam is less but they consume more coming to the third positions is very deficient the meghalaya they produce more but they consume less maybe they have consume other than fees they are consume meat coming to fourth fifth that is the same they might the same position but sixth again mizoram they produce more but they consume less so this is the yeah but in national average it is 10 but in north north is in average it is 7 even if we claim that the total fish consumed north is more 
95 percent population they consume fish, but still then the total consumption in a year is less than the national average of the country. So there is a scope is there to increase. Only three states they are coming here, consuming. Now coming to the fish production and, and productivity, the, as I told in uh, Tripura, it is highest 3.3 ton per hectare. But Assam, they produce more fish only due to they having more water bodies, but productivity is almost half of that thing. The rest of the Northeast states, the productivity is very, very poor. So there is all possibilities there. Even if Dr. B.K. Das told that to simply uh, increasing the simple margin of 10, 20, 25 percent, there is an ample scope to increase the production in the Northeast. Now, if we compare that why you should go for peace, if there is a resource availability is there, but available the input is less. So if you compare the efficiency, feed efficiency, the fish is the highest. That means by input energy is same, then fish more efficiently convert from feed to flesh. That's what is the advantage with the less environmental pollution. Now I have yeah, analyze the state by state the opportunities of what we can do from aquaculture. Coming to Assam, as I told, they produce more, but productivity is less. But consumption, they consume more fish. Then what should the strategies? We should increase for unit area. We have to increase the uh, production. Enhance the fish yield from the wasteland. It has been also told by our previous speakers. And utilize the derelict water bodies. Then what is the uh, research uh, issue? Species diversification, then integrated farming, which is suitable for different areas. Pain and cage culture should be there in the wetland. And feed is a problem. It is, I have seen it is almost all states feed is a problem. So locally they should prepare the feed. The value addition, preservation, packaging, marketing, that's the processing of the product. Coming to Manipur, productivity again it is low and consumption also low. So what is the strategy again? The productivity and quality of the seed productions, it is required. Enhancing fish yield in the wet, uh, wetlands, developing ecotourism, these are the some strategies should be there. Then for researchable issues, will be the intensification of the culture system, fish come livestock farming, pain and cage culture, again it is same repeating. Then local feed, again feed, same issues. Then value addition, preservation, packaging. Coming to Tripura, yes, productivity is high, that means at par with national average, and consumption is very high, it is highest in India. Then what is the strategy to increase? Increase the productivity. Then from where? From reservoir only, we have to increase the productivity. Then species diversification, seed production, feed, value-added feed, these are the some of the areas, the researchable issues. For ornamental products, productivity is very low. And fish consumption, but they are consuming more fish, but they are not producing that much. The strategy, strategy should be increasing the production per unit area, enhancing fish yield from the reservoirs and wetlands, and utilizing the vast derelict water bodies. These are some strategies. Researchable issues will be intensification of the culture practices, pain and catch culture, development of the farm made feed, paddy come fish culture, and ornamental fishes. From Meghalaya, again, the fish productivity is low, fish consumption also low. Then, strategy will be increasing the production for unit area, it is for all, enhance the fish yield from the reservoir and wetlands, utilizing the vast derelict water bodies. And researchable issues will be intensification of uh, culture practices, catch aquaculture, and development of the farm made feed. For Mizoram, Again, the productivity is very low and consumption is very low. The strategy should be for unit area, area production, productivity should increase, enhancing fish yield from the reservoirs. Intensification of the culture practices, cage aquaculture, and development of the farm made feed. You see, many things are common. I have uh, summarized everything in the next slide. Nagaland, fish productivity is very low. Fish consumption also, it is low. Then increasing the production for unit area is a strategy, enhance the fish yield from the reservoirs. Intensification of culture practices, cage aquaculture in the first reservoirs, development of farm made feed. For Sikkim, productivity is very, very low, it's rather it's the lowest, and fish consumption also lowest. So in this state, it is either production, productivity, and consumption both are lowest here. The strategy increasing the production for unit area, enhancing fish from the reservoirs. The researchable issue will be the intensification of the culture practices, cold waters and lake fisheries, cage aquaculture, ornamental fisheries. Now, if you summarize everything, so all the eight states, this is one problem is low productivity. I have seen the first slide, it is almost 50% of the productivity uh, national average. Quality seed, it is constant. Dr. Jana also told the same thing. Acidic soil, total northeast, the soil is acidic. So unless otherwise it is, it is not uh, addressed or neutralized or to alkaline side, the productivity cannot be increased. Feed, nowhere that locally feed is uh, available. 
uh, edge, the feed is transported from the mainland to northeast for kg, it is in just four rupees. So it is not viable at all. So we have to find out the way the means to how to prepare the feed. I have detailed side for the feed uh, in the next slides. Fish consumption, as we have the perception that the fish, people consume fish, but they are not consuming at that rate where total country is consuming. So fish consumption rates to be increased. Then low temperature, somewhere Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh, the temperature is very low. So cold water fisheries should be promoted. That's why the technology-based cold water fisheries should be promoted in this area. Finance and policy support, some policy support should be uh, in place as a doctor uh, chairman sir told that uh, some destructive fisheries, some conservations, and uh, some uh, that is very small size piece are also uh, sold in the market. This type of thing should be in the policy to enhance or conserve the, the fishery production in that area. So what is the research will share? It will totally summarize within our eight state. So one will be the GI based research and knowledge mapping. We have not mapped map the total the knowledge based available with the peoples in a systematic way. So the way that a mineral map was shown uh, by the, uh, Dr. Das, I think. Similarly, in different areas, the total, what is the package of practice, what is farmers are doing, so it should be mapped that way. Then species diversification, it was also discussed at previous paper. Integrated farming, as Dr. our chairman also is doing, and that uh, was shown, it's a very integrated farming. Then genetic improvement. This is the area we need to develop either for the cold water fisheries or for other species, indigenous species. Unless otherwise we improve the genetic quality, then we cannot expect more productions. Running water fish culture and catch culture, you know, that is, is a hilly area, the water flows. So in this running or raceway, how to standardize the culture technique, then, then only we can cover some of the area where it is not at the still now. Feed from the local ingredients, it is, it is a big issue. So how to utilize the local ingredients to prepare the feed so that the total aquaculture production, 50 to 60% cost remains in this feed only. So if you will address this issue, definitely the production cost will be reduced. Then what the opportunity remains with us? This is, that is a cold water fisheries. It is, you know, that is cold water fisheries, the high commodity, the cost, they are selling the price at 1,500 to 2,000 rupees per kg. It's very, very high. And you know, this is, this fish, this uh, species can be taken as a healthy fish. That means that is that we are talking about the omega fish, that is about a smart fish that can be uh, target to produce this healthy fish for all. Even if the production is very less, but it's a very premium fish that can be pro uh, produced with high price. That also can be tagged with organic aquaculture. That is possible because we know the organic aquaculture is not to produce in mass. That is for quality. So this cold water fisheries can be tagged with the organic aquaculture. Then hatchery techniques, you know, that is hatcheries, the, as the aquaculture based on the different altitudes. So the hatchery should be the standardized with the micro environment. So what is the humidity? What is the temperature? What is the other factors? So the common hatchery techniques standardized in other area cannot be directly put in the high altitude, medium altitude or low altitude. It should be standardized. Culture of stunted single is one area because in many uh, areas, water remains for very short times. In that, that water bodies can be targeted where this uh, stunted fingerling can be cultured and within three, four months, the total harvest can be done. Brood bank has told previously that once we, uh, that quality seed we need means it should be, brood bank should be there. Broodors should be fed with a specific feed. Before breeding, they should be given vitamin mineral mixture, mixture which will induce to produce good quality seed. And pen and bill culture details, it was discussed by Dr. Vikas Das. Then value added product, it is one of the area, what I presume, that if some people are not consuming peas, maybe this production of the value added product. Or I can say there is a wild idea of blending the peas and meat and making a product. Maybe attract those people who are not eating the peas. So this can be tried. That can help to uh, boost the production demand. Then where will you get it? If will total water bodies will be divided into three areas unutilized, underutilized, or optimally utilized. We are getting something from the pond and tank. This totally underutilized is uh, what, uh, wetlands, gray water bodies, deals to more than 50 percent area. So it is simply simple answer that if we want to increase the productivity production in the Northeast area, this area we cannot just 
neglected. So for this, this under utilized the Assam, Manipur, and Arunachal, this should be targeted. For uh, the river canals, Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, it should be targeted. Now, ornamental fishery also, it has been covered by Dr. B.K. Das, so this scope is there. So I this, this slide I'm giving because you see, when these ornamental pieces are kept inside the cages, it is the, the experiment done in the CIFE. So you see the color appearance. When they are getting this natural carotenoids from the water, the color is so bright. If you keep in the aquarium, give the feed, you will not get this much of bright colorants. You will get only in the so keeping ornamental pieces in cages also, you will fetch better price. Now that is the state fish, Dr. Jena also told. So these are the cons for conservation purpose only. Now coming to the seed, quality seed, which is common uh, concern. The seed is available, but quality seed is not available. That's affecting the growth. So for quality seed, broodstock is required. For broodstock, they need a specific feed, which to be uh, fed to the broodstock. Then if you're having the broodstock and has to be standardized at different altitude, definitely get the uh, good seed. Again, survival, of uh, this uh, larva, it is a main problem for which it needs a life, proper live feed, or we can give enriched live feed. The enriched means it may be enriched with omega 3 fatty acids, some vitamins, so that if that live feed enriched with vitamins and uh, fatty acids, it will enhance the uh, survival. Nursery rearing, some uh, farmers, the business for the fry from finger reproductions. They can go for standardized the nursery rearing, but stunted fingerling is definitely a good avenue. And CIA has done some uh, work with many states how to culture stunted fingerling where the production is five ton. And transportation that transportation is not very good at uh, um, northeast, so the transportation of seed and transportation of the final product that also affect if the transportation is not good. The coming to the culture practice that either we go for the monoculture that uh, also explained right now for Jena, or we can go for uh, polyculture. Polyculture with a freshwater prawn. So because freshwater prawn, the price is almost 800 to 1000 kg, as I told at Northeast. So any culture mixing with the freshwater prawn will be good. I mean, integrated farming, of course, it is there. So you have to find, because at different altitude, the performance of the animal will be different. So at a different altitude, when you are combining with aquaculture, the performance of the animal, so which combination works well, it should be taken into consideration. Stunted fingerling, again, I'm reminding here because sub sub water bodies for three to four months for that area, stunted fingerlings is a very good option. Soil and water quality, as I told, that uh, the acidic soil will be there. It should be very regularly monitored so that production will not be affected. Pond management, due to this hilly area, the silting problem will be there. It slopes from the high altitude that the, the mud comes so that every time we have to be silting it. You have to manage the pond. Supplementary feed, again, I have re uh, repeating here because this is the major problem in the Northeast. That commercial feed is going to very yeah, firstly, as Dr. Dena told that we should establish some feed mill. I know that in Tripura, many feed mills have been established, but still then it is not that model is not working. Rather, we should tell the farmers how they should prepare locally this feed. I will tell details about the feed. So you know that that's, we have. Uh, um, I, have, I, I will explain. So, what are the unconventional feed uh, resources available in the northeast? In different state wise, if you see the very common are the plant and leaf resources that, green, that is given in uh, green color. In almost all states, the leaves, aquatic uh, plants are plentifully available. Then, if you see the red color, the rubber seed available in Arunachal's Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura. This is the forest byproduct. As I told, 65% of the area is covered with forest. So unless otherwise we utilize the forest byproducts, we cannot survive. So these are the, some of the things I have highlighted. Besides this, many things are there, but these are very potential areas that I will explain. So if we summarize everything about the feed, yeah, locally available ingredients, it is a vegetable waste because vegetables and horticulture, these are the very good avenue in Northeast. About 4 uh, million tons are available. So, so we, we can expect a huge waste from the uh, horticulture and vegetable. Then leaves are plenty, which is forest leaves are there. And I will give you a list of the total leaves. What is the potential? What is the protein content? Then some non-edible seed also there. We can utilize the non-edible seed by extracting the proteins. The rubber seed is hugely available. It is almost 30,000 to 40,000 tons available in the Northeast. 
So how much protein you will get, I will have to calculate. Rice bran, yes, almost every state, they cultivate rice. So rice bran is the only in, yeah, byproducts available to all farmers. They utilize, so they use only this thing, rice bran, in the aquaculture pond. Uh, otherwise, they are not, uh, it is not affordable to use the electric feed. So how to meet out this demand? So if you are having the less amount of DORB or less amount of any agricultural byproducts, the strategy will be enhance the utilization of rice grains. Whatever rice grains we are having, how to utilize the efficiency by using the technology. The technology means utilizing these enzymes or giving this deficiency nutrient present in the rice grain. Then utilization of the waste, vegetable waste or horticultural waste. Utilization of a non-edible seed, which is we are throwing for fertilizer that can be utilized for the protein source that I will tell. Utilization of the forest waste. Now, as we are telling that the farmers are using only rice grains, the question is whether Northeast has sufficient URB. I have given a calculation. Total paddy production in Northeast um, is 8 million tons. Whereas the rice brand production will be 6% of that thing will be 0.48 million tons. So for aquaculture, it will be one third because mostly it will be used by the cattle or poultry they are using. So let Hello. one third. Sir. Dr. Sahu. Sir. Uh, I think you, you should close now. Four more speakers are there. Okay, sir. I, I will close. You sum up. Summarize it. So this will be deficient. So now, as I told, and uh, okay, leaves. Some leaves I will tell. So these are some you see some leaves which contain more than 20% proteins. So these are only available in the northeast. So these areas you see that plenty of the leaves are available in northeast which contains more than 20% proteins. We have utilized it, and we have found that completely it can replace the DORB, and this we have developed. That is a fermenter from mixer. It is prepared from a, a drum only. So you can take the leaf, you can put it there, put some culture that is ketomium globosum. Within 96 hours, that uh, leaf will be ready for use in the uh, fish feed without using the rice bran. Now, as I told, the rubber seed, rubber seed is plentifully available. If we can extract the proteins, it contains 22% proteins. But if you will extract the protein into 90% protein contents, it can completely replace the soybean. So in, we have seen it 40% it can be utilized in the fish feed. Similarly, castor seed protein also, it contains 92% proteins. Castor seed is not utilized at all because it contains some resin. So it's from seed, protein 22%, it contains 26% after removing the holes. Then proteins, after external protein, it is 60%. After defeated, then from protein, it is 92%. So this is the things you know that uh, finally what I am to say that uh, uh, this technology can cannot be utilized directly by the farmers. We should take the help of the, the state department should take the help from the entrepreneurs and from the research institute. Almost every state having the research institute I am having. So these state governments they should help small help from the research, research institutes that can be uh, given to the farmers. So finally I will tell that the the maximum utilization of local resources. What are the water body we are having? We should utilize this thing. What are the forest byproducts we are having? We should utilize this thing. And we should be best technology best. And we, at the same time, this we cannot uh, deteriorate the environment of the Northeast. And the industry and research, research organizations, unless otherwise they are coming together, we cannot uh, progress in the Northeast. Thank you very much. This is North Cells uh, about the, the strategy. North to cell, it is everything. <laughs> Good. Sao, sao. Any question from anybody? Participants? Gradually they are decreasing. Decreasing, no? It is 126. Ah, because uh, as you said uh, rubber seed. Sir, sir. Rubber seed, castor seed. Yes. Have, you have you worked on these seeds? Sir, uh, we have had a project. Have you, have, you, have you formulated a feed? Yes, sir. We are having a project with CAU Tripura, Dr. Ratan Arke Saha is here. Simadri is there. Yeah, now but, the thing is, if that feed is prepared. Yeah, yeah. But has it been validated? Yes, yes, yes. Validated. Been, yeah, validated. And I think this is a very good avenue for the Northeast that we should have a plant yes, to extract. It, it has attracted my rubber seed. Castor, yeah. we do not have very much. No, it, it is not here. It is in Andhra Pradesh. Castor, we have some wild castor. Yeah. Some wild castor. So one question. Yeah. Sir. Well, ah, one question you... from me, sir. Ah, sir. Namaste, sir. Sir. So nice to see you. Uh, yeah. So sir. it is really, uh, I appreciate the way you are. Uh, uh, inviting and so many good resource 
uh, options were there. Here I have uh, specific to Dr. Uh, Sahu. Mm -hmm. I have two specific questions, first of all, and it is very much that is what you have already asked. If we have both, like uh, resources are there, just you have pointed out some of these, uh, uh, like uh, rubber seed, at the same time, you have also uh, worked on neem cake also you have mentioned. So these two resources you say that, because feed I know that this is really one of the biggest problem for the development of uh, aquaculture in Northeast because of the higher cost of uh, transport cost and all those it makes the cost high. But whether you have worked on this and if you have worked, you have validated and but we must know what is the acceptance level in the field. Correct. So that is whether it has been done or not, well, that is required, then only just it would be accessible and the farmer can use it. Correct. So, sir, I will just clarify, we are not using the rubber seed as such or neem seed as such. What we are doing, we are extracting the protein from the rubber seed and, and uh, this neem and we are ma making the protein concentrate. So that protein concentrate can replace totally soya protein concentrate. So that we have validated in the in a debit project and we have developed one prototype machine where we can put this seed and where we'll get the protein concentrate. Anyway, okay, we will leave it at yes. this. Happy I, I think to other people will not get chance. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Savaji. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Your slides were very good, really good. Thank you, sir. And uh, you have uh, devoted time for this presentation, it seems. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, may I invite now Dr. A.K. Samantaji from Veterinary College, Aizwal, on the CAU. Dilip Kumarji, bohut bohut namaste. Namaste, <laughs> namaskar, sir. Uh, we are meeting tomorrow again. Tomorrow, yeah, we will meet again. Uh, yes. May I share the slide? Yeah. Uh, Samantha Sam? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, it is sir, accessible. It is an animal nutrition. Uh, sir, we, we allowed you, sir. You can share. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, my slide yes, sir. is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Honorable Chairman, sir, Professor Bajubra, sir, uh, former Vice Chancellor, SM Agriculture University. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, CAU in Paul. Honorable DDC, sir, and other dignitaries in this webinar and district delegates. I shall be talking on researchable issues in animal nutrition to augment livestock production in Northeast India. Since morning, we have been listening that feeds and fodders are the major constraint in augmenting the livestock productivity. So let us uh, see that uh, what is the status of the feed resources in Northeast, as well as how best we can utilize these uh, feed resources to augment the livestock productivity in Northeastern India. So uh, before I uh, go for that researchable issues, uh, let us uh, have a quick look at the uh, Northeastern states. As we all know, there are eight states and that climate varies from near tropical to alpine in the hills and acidic soils are there with rich organic matter. And net shown area is hardly 12.7%, which is far lower than the national average. It's hardly 46.84%. Uh, and one uh, important thing is that 80% of the population in the northeastern states, they are tribal and 100% of them, they are meat eater. That means these northeastern states, they are, uh, that is known as meat consuming zone. So this, uh, considering this high demand of meat and increasing demand of the milk, there is a tremendous potential of this animal has been sector in this northeast sector. And uh, morning session also, uh, we have seen and uh, afternoon session also on our DDC has also shown that things livestock and poultry population. I'm not going in detail, but only thing I want to say here 
that uh, the maximum livestock production, uh, livestock population, as well as poultry is in Assam, followed by Meghalaya. Even the sizable populations of this pig are also there in Nagaland. And what is the production status in Northeastern region? If we see these things, the milk is hardly 185,000 tons. Uh, uh, this we have seen already. Yeah. You can skip oh, off this. Sir. Yeah, come to yeah. defeat. Just, just I want to say that he said that there are deficits of this 50% of this meat, milk, and 87% that egg production. So uh, the productive performance of this livestock are lower than the desired optimum level. And the feed is the major constraint in this livestock production, apart from that other uh, that animal reproduction, animal health, then management issue, all these things are also playing important role. As you all know, that feed accounts for 65 to 70 percent of the total cost of the livestock farming. And out of that, 65 to 70 percent is only due to the consistent, actually, which is imposing high cost for that livestock rearing. As per an estimate, uh, there is a deficiency of almost 11 percent dry fodder and concentrate is around 44% deficit and 35.6 or 36% deficit of these green fodders. And these animal feed availability in the northeastern region, there are very scattered uh, informations are available. Some very guys informed that uh, or reported that 65 to 80% uh, this deficit of this animal feed that is the concentrate for the feeding of the livestock. And the, in order to maximize the productivity, we should ascertain or we should make sure the availability of the feed resources as well as their efficient utilization. So therefore that sound research on the feeds and feeding coupled with the strong extension and technology transfer will be very important for this augmenting this livestock production. So here, let us see what are the different feed resources in the Northeastern region. One is the crop residues. This crop residues is the important feed resources for the livestock in the northeastern region. As long as we have the crop productions, we will get in this crop residues. Morning time it has shown that almost 18% surplus of this crop, crop is there, cereal crop is there. So that's why the crop residues are available in plenty and the dry forage is also available in plenty. Moreover, this pasture and grazing resources, these are the grains from the native pastures as well as the, some other grazing sources. Then forage crops, this is rich in uh, northeastern state. Almost these are the cultivated fodders, straws, as well as the tree fodders, which are available in the northeastern region. Then concentrate. This is the cereal grains and oil seed cake, which are available very scanty. And this will impose serious challenges in the coming years. Most of the time, we have to. Uh, we are uh, procuring these concentrate feed ingredients from nearby um, plain areas, and the transportation cost is very high for that one. Then agro-industrial byproduct like that rice bran, wheat bran, this is available uh, in plenty. Another one is that tapping of these non-conventional feed resources. Here we have to work in a concerted way, show that we can utilize this non-conventional feed resources in order to meet out the nutrient requirement of the livestock in this particular northeastern region. Now, uh, as we have seen, there is a shortage of this feeds and fodder. What should be the possible solutions and what should be the researchable issues on this animal nutrition? There are three issues. First issue is that we have to see the quantitative, qualitative enhancement of the available feed resources. That means whatever available feed resources are there, how best we can utilize that feed resources. That is the one issue. Second issue is that enhancement of the feed resource. That means that is the quantitative aspect of the feed, res uh, feed resources. And third one is the adoption of the feed technology, which is available as on today. And as well as we have to strive for the development of the appropriate technology. And other one, definitely the provision for the safe and nutrition feed just to produce the quality animal product. So these are the four issues, researchable issues we have to look into in order to improve the availability of the livestock feed. So coming to the first issue, first important thing what is to be done, that is the precise nutrition and feeding. It is also known as balanced feeding. Whenever we are offering the balanced feeding, it will provide the nutrients that will match the animal nutrients requirement. 
as well as it will maximize the nutrient used in the animal food chain and it will minimize the release of environmental pollutants. Mostly, the feeds are deficient in nitrogen and minerals, and that can be supplemented with these tree leaves, all seed cakes, urea nitrogen, and mineral mixtures. And in this regard, I want to say that thing that National Dairy Development Board they have formulated one very user friendly uh, this one computer software by which they can go for the ration balancing program. Now they are going to the farmer's door, and there itself. They are getting the information about the availability of the feed ingredients, and they are balancing that ration by incorporating the available feed ingredients as well as mineral mixture. And it has been observed; it is very successful. Through FAO, also some other developing countries also have adopted that particular programs, and we should try to adopt it, or we should follow these things, test it, test these things in the northeastern states. Then coming to that uh, another issues regarding that uh, qualitative enhancement that is the supplementation of area specific mineral mixture. Most of the northeastern states, the soil and plants are deficient in minerals. So we have to go for the mapping of the minerals in the northeastern states, and we have to prepare the area specific mineral mixtures. We can. These have, the, have been done, Doctor Samanta. Sir. Most of these have been done. Okay. Sir. You can you can tell your cream points. And yes, then sir. close it up because it is going to be 5:30. You know, three yes, more sir. are there. Another eight to ten minutes. Quickly, time. quickly, yeah. because then so, area of mineral mixture have been mapped and all that. They have been done. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So we have to uh, prepare this area specific mineral mixture, and that has been prepared in our Mizoram also for the dairy cattle, and it is uh, improving the milk production in this uh, um, state also. Now we have to see the nutritional strategy to reduce the environmental load when there is an imbalance feeding. In that case, there is excretion of nitrogen, phosphorus, as well as there is emission of the greenhouse gases. So we have to go for the dietary manipulation, like that phase feeding, supplementation of the amino acids and exogenous enzymes, in order to reduce the environmental pollution as well as mitigate the greenhouse gases. Then coming to the strategic use for the local feed resources. We have to formulate the diet for, uh, for by taking the less quantity of fodder, more quantity of concentrate at lower level of productions, and we have to select the fodders which will yield the more crude protein and digestible organic matter per unit of the land area, which is maximum. Instead of going for the biomass, if you are thinking about the biomass, in that case, biomass will be more when it is mature one. In that case, the lignin content is going to be more, and in the in the intensive system, we can analyze the feedstuffs. For the proximate principle before it is incorporated in the diet okay. of the animals. Okay. Listen. Then now strategically, what we need? Okay. Yes. These are the all these things you know. What the years we have been talking about. Strategically, what yes. we need is we need a type of mission in the in the line of livestock. I mean, in the national health mission, say yes. for example. We need in northeastern yes. region a food and fodder security mission. To be supported yes. by government of India. Okay, yes. what we need is a close collaboration and scaling up of activities of different AICRP projects being operated in Northeast. AICRP yes. project in say uh, forest crop, AICRP on timber crop, AICRP on maize, AICRP on these that you know all the AICRPs working with the. Uh, with with those crops that also can become animal feed, their yes. you know presence has to be made wider. Collaboration with them has to be tightened, you know, and then yes. store departments should be roped in. All will come only when we have a feed security mission, you know, and then under that umbrella everything can be fitted. In. Baki jo hai, the concentrate excellent deficiency agara agara this has been there. For n number of years, nothing has happened. So therefore, to make something happen, we need a, an approach, a strategy, which can only be covered. I feel, in my opinion, under a mission. Okay, we will conclude in that. Thank you very much, and then we will take the other two speaker. Five thirty was the timing. Okay, okay. We, we have understood. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Now, sir, uh, sir, 
सर एक छोटा सा हम वो सामंता को आपको आपसे भी एडवाइस लेना चाहता है so because he is trying about the so so we can replace up to 20% hai na in the there that is has a, been, that has also been worked on earlier no no it is okay but actually i am very much interested because in manipur we are using tapioca tapioca up to what percentage we can uh, replace without affecting the adverse effect on growth sir Okay. If you have no problem, I have no problem. Sir, sir, may I reply? On Shao Shao, you can say. Sir, may I reply? No. Why nothing has happened to notice? Only because we keep speaking like this. <laughs> you know, we we do not talk about strategy. We do not want to hit upon the government of India. You know that you should do this. You should do that. You know that's why we are lamenting, as I said earlier. You know over the years. Now we should be so very focused that our research says these are the things needed, and you should support to do those. Uh, anyway, ha, huh, uh, your this thing. Sir, sir already we have paired the unconventional fruits of like the palm oil sludge, which can be incorporated at 30% level. We have used the rubber seed mill in the pig creations. That is also 30% level. We can incorporate in the diet of growing pig without adversely affecting their production performance. Yeah. Now, now do that. Thank you. Do, 30%. do that and tell me Sir. with the current production of chow chow. Okay. How many Sir. animals you can feed? Tell me that. You know the chow chow which human beings are competing with. They, I mean that squash you are meaning. With yeah. this squash that we have in northeastern region, how yeah. many animal for how many days we can feed? It's okay if it can replace. <laughs> you see yeah. the quantity produced. Yeah. So we should advocate it's those things available. whose availability is there. You know, it yeah. should be available. Yes, sir. Chow chow is seasonal. For one season it comes. That too, you know, people are. Its rate has gone up because human beings have started taking it. You know, religious. Exactly. So all those kinds of thing also. When we do this, the other side has to be seen. The the yes, practicability sir. of it, sustaining it. Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can tell thirty percent talk to who is that? Yes, sir. We have we have done the experiment, particularly that palm oil sludge. Which is just thrown away that can be incorporated in the diet of uh, growing and finishing pig up to 30 percent without any adverse effects. Animal nutrition, may I say, I am also animal scientist. If you Sorry. take out the thesis, PhD, MSc thesis from the universities, you will Sorry. find that almost everything is possible to be added as animal feed. Every Sorry. experiment, which success they would say, but why there is no feed in commercial scale? You know, computed with those kind of thing. You know, it, it is it is simple logical question. Why we do not have a, a, a computed ration with incorporation of chow chow, even tea leaves? They say it can be fed. You know, all mm -hmm. all almost everything. But the fact is, since last thirty years, we have not got a new feed formula. That is the that is the fact. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? So there it is. So if we keep doing the things as we have done before in last three decades, we'll be getting the same kind of result every time. We will be saying, "Yeah, so, but commercialization is required, sir." Yeah, com commercially it is required. Yes, sir. You are saying Mizoram chow chow, for example, it is being exported, yeah. isn't it? Chow chow mm -hmm. is there is one export group of uh, uh, squash. So mm -hmm. when their product is going abroad, mm -hmm. you know how will it be available for pigs or for other things, and mm -hmm. for how many days? So you, we have to come out from that kind of thinking. You know, then something will happen. Okay, don't mind me saying that, but you know, one research is research we do research, output is public good, isn't it? It should help public. You know, how how many of our research is helping public? We have now to therefore, you know, reset our own mind, and accordingly too. So. Anyway, anyway, okay. Thank you. 
Okay. But today, you. we have some other time we will say because five thirty, I am also tired actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I invite uh, Professor T K Dutta? Transboundary animal disease again. T K Dutta, how is here? Good afternoon. Yeah. So, respected chairman and honorable vice chancellor sir and professor shah sir all the delegates attended this meeting very good afternoon to all so today we got that issue that is the transboundary animal diseases and major threat to animal husband in northeast india since morning i think most of the people all the speakers they have tried to include those topic particularly the animal husbandry because in our agriculture without this topic we cannot go ahead and uh, with, with, as time is very much less so i want to go very fast because our livestock and india we are very integrated part as our big country huge population our animal population is also too high so we are very much well ahead with the highest population of buffalo good population of sheep goat cattle poultry all those things so obviously because of the presence of huge population of animal livestock and poultry its economic impact is also huge and our economy indian economy this is a agrarian economy and on the agrarian economy the animal husbandry its contribution is almost one quarter more than one quarter it is 25.6% of total agricultural gdp and 4.11% of national gdp and globally definitely the animal husbandry sector it has better contribution in the agri economy it is around 50% but in our country it is around 26% so obviously it is understandable that our animal husbandry including poultry it is having huge impact on our national economy because it is giving the livelihood of the poor people our village people it is more than 20.5% of a million people they are depending on it but question is that our animal husbandry sector particularly the livestock and poultry sector it is really having variety of problems the problem is everywhere globally everywhere and same is not different in our country but major problem if we consider regarding the impact on the economy of the poultry as well as the livestock economy this is the diseases mostly the diseases and one small data because that can give the justification how it is impacting because our world bank they have already given an estimate that for last 10 years probably we have lost 200 billion us dollars because of the disease only zoonotic aspect of the disease and there are many aspects particularly in vietnam thailand they have lost because of the highly pathogenic avian influenza look at that they have lost 1.5% of their gdp and this is the data it's coming one single disease the bovine spongy form encephalopathy that could cost in english meat industry around 9.2 billions so there are enormous list that how the disease different diseases can cost and impact on the economy of our life so and poultry industry in india also although we don't have very good calculated data particularly the economic impact of the variety of diseases on our economy we have limited data we have seen that one data it said that only fmd it is costing around 23000 crores per annum on the livestock industry ppr it has given us on soft around 1100 crores per year and the last highly pathogenic avian influenza it has given 110 crores so one estimate we have seen the one latest data that one estimate says probably we are losing more than 50000 crores per year because of the only diseases of the animal there is a indian economy it is facing it may be more because our calculation is not so far it's up to the mark come to the topic of the day because i got the topic of the particular transboundary animal disease because this is our uh, if we categorize the infectious disease particularly like emerging infectious disease we say it is the exotic disease we say it is transboundary disease it is very closely related uh, if we, that is the emerging infectious disease means it can be emerged within a very short within a very region within a country within the animal in the different host but the transboundary when you are talking about this transboundary disease something different when they are highly infectious when it can come as a endemic form it can come to the transmissible to different part without just following the boundary of the nation irrespective of the national borders and it causes the serious economic loss and possibly it also increase the public health point of view 
because and question my definitely the FAO they have given one consolidated list of around 12 to 14 diseases. It is not exclusive, obviously. Like the major disease for the animals, which is considered as the transboundary importance. Like starting from FMD, rinderpest, then CBPP, CPOX, goat pox, PPR, highly pathogenic avian influenza. We have red belly fever, even the modified form of the Newcastle disease. African swine fever is looming now. It is in the discussion since morning, including classical swine fever. So, some, sometimes rabies and brucellosis also can be considered as the transboundary animal disease because it is also having very great impact. We need to understand that why this transboundary disease they are evolving, what are the reasons for that it is evolving and it is causing the great havoc on the economy of the entire world. The, definitely it has a variety of reasons. If we start to understand, I think the mother of all the problems in this globe is a single point that is the ever growing population. In this globe, whatever the problems we can discuss, we can be in future, in past, it is the basic of the population growing because once population is growing, all kind of demand by the human being, it is increasing. That is putting the pressure on variety of aspects. Let's start with the, because of the excessive population, our travel, our mode of business, the mode of movement of the animal, human being, it is now mixing everywhere, every part of the world. Because it is now interesting data, it said that any person can reach any place of the world within 24 hours. And interestingly is that if we understand any kind of disease which is caused by the micro parasite, whatever it may be, then incubation time is far more than the 24 hours means if any carrier is carrying any pathogen with any person or an animal, we cannot detect them, whether they are carrying anything. Earlier during the SARS outbreak, the scientific data mentioned that worldwide outbreak of the SARS, it was probably seeded from a single person on a single day on a single floor of a Hong Kong hotel means one endemic disease, it can go to epidemic worldwide from a single point because of the rapid movement. This rapid movement is demand of the people of the day. Our agricultural practice, you look at the agricultural practice, it's the intensive agriculture practice. All our scientific forum, they are talking about that we need to go for further intensification of our agriculture. Yes, it is a demand because population is increasing. Our demand says that we need to produce more and more food. And number two, we are prospering every day, our developing world and our demand for the animal protein is increasing like anything. And to meet those demand, obviously our farm intensification is growing on. We are reducing the forest. Our animal domestication is increasing and everything now mixing together, the wild, the forest, the human and the livestock. All together we are mixing together means we are getting exposed. Whatever the disease earlier was for the wild animals, now they are easily invading to our domestic animals and ultimately it can spread world over for the, all the animals. Climate change is definitely another big issue where the climate change says that it is altering the environment. It is altering the rainfall pattern. It is altering the temperature wave. Means one thing said, our the Northern hemisphere, part of the European countries where temperature was earlier less. Now that temperature is rising. So nowadays they are also facing a lot of diseases transmitting by the vectors like the peak vectors, which was not earlier there. Because of the climate change, we can see certain data that mosquito ball disease, it can be double, triple in the 10 years. So many things, many issues it is going on because the disease can be transmitting because of one of the factor that is the climate change. Once again, the basic is probably the growth of human population. And what about the encroachment? Every day we are encroaching the forest area. We are preparing it for the cultivable agricultural land. We are using for the the grazing of the animals and now they are mixing together. So there is every chance of the transmission or interchange of the diseases between them. So between the domestic to the wild, wild to domestic animal and from domestic to the human being. So it is a vicious cycle, it cannot be stopped. So there is one of the major reason, probably the encroachment to the wild area by me for the agricultural practice. And new environment is also responsible for it. We are 
nowadays can import any high yielding animals from the country to our country so they are now coming and reaching and mixing with the new environment no one knows whether those animals are capable to sustain they are now facing a new microbiome in this endemic area our area and same thing the our area also when we are exporting some animals so it's a big mixing of this movement of this pathogen through the animals from one part to another part sir just one small issue regarding that how transboundary animal disease they are making a big impact on our eco economy and there is a long list huge list we can make it from the from the big beginning definitely if we uh, there is any tags but the transboundary disease it starts with the high morbidity mortality now we can take simple example of the african swine fever what made it in china now it has already entered in our country so in our domestic market there will be lot of demand because the animal product will be less decrease in the national food security of course and high cost of the treatment prevention control lot and this because huge quantity of people in our country they are all dependent on the animal husbandry practice they are going to lose their job their livelihood so of all together it is a big threat on the national security and our national food security if there is any tax in any country i could not restrict that issue particularly for the north is although we are talking today about the north east is the issue because sir transboundary animal disease it is not a region specific transboundary once we talk about it enters in a country it makes under control the entire country but when we look at the northeastern region and rather than the other part of the indian international border northeast is having more vulnerable position to get anything in the form of the trans boundary disease because most of the boundary area this is not very much manned or having the vigilance so it is almost near to open from where it can get in so a few i think few statement we need to provide that what we can do once there is any trans boundary animal disease there is any opportunity or there is any option so first and foremost thing it is the guideline for all the organization of the either fao or the who or oie all the organization they say the simple thing that we need to follow the strict by safety and by security so by security measures there should be three different layers international level by security at the international level means the borders by security measures in our national level and by security measures for our own farm individually international border when we talk for the transboundary animal disease the experts say that there is no country which can sustain and maintain their biosecurity until or unless it is region based in our suppose india we have a, we are having the bordering countries like we have nepal we have bhutan we have pakistan bangladesh myanmar if those countries because all are closely approximated if those countries they do not have good biosecurity practice whatever may be the job we are going to do nothing is going to happen so region based biosecurity i think it is the buzzword that we need to think about in the international level and the national level biosecurity we need to talk about the compartmental biosecurity because india is a big country we cannot maintain the biosecurity for the whole nation as a whole rather than if we think about to make certain compartmental zone disease free area in a particular area in a country that may help for export business maintaining of the disease free zone because all the countries whenever there is any tags there is any exotic disease there is any eids mostly thora, they think thora twice thora jaldi kijiye datta sahab okay sir just a few more slides sir i i need to work so with that biosecurity and biosecurity measure is the foremost important early disease reporting and compensation sir you are to understand the best i think regarding this issue that how important it is the early reporting system during yeah. the highly pathogenic avian influenza probably india we failed to our report it early uh, number 2 we, we have got it early reporting that is an issue early report uh, then yes, third issue now the compensation because farmers until or unless we can assure them that if you report the disease early then we can compensate you the fully then they will be quite encouraging otherwise they will hide the disease so that will make the difference the compensation should be attractive and up to the mark so that farmer should not they are the poor person if we cannot compensate they will never report it early okay. because our diagnostic system our surveillance system it is not up to the mark even up to the level of the human practice 
Okay. Then policies, protocols, and action plan is needs to be very much clear that if anything happens in future, how we should move ahead. It is not that after getting entry of the and so now we are thinking how to protect it. So we have to have the very good plan in advance that in future, if anything comes, what we are going to do. There might be very much various of the issues that can be described now because of the lack of the time, we need to move faster. And it needs to be done under the one umbrella of the one health and one, one world, one health. We cannot be doing the job in isolation that human being now they are facing the COVID-19, we cannot do anything. It is not like the issue. All the disease because it is having the, the more than 60% of the diseases they are zoonotic in importance. So now one health umbrella, it should be there. Now the new issues has come that one health, one medicine. That is the probably ultimate option. So now I want to conclude hurriedly regarding the issues because emerging infectious disease or transmitted animal disease, everybody need understandable that it is really one big issue. It is not only for one nation, it is for the whole world. And if there is a new disease, even China, like a big country, they are half of the peak population devastated because of the one African swine fever. Now, it if happens in our country also entered. So how to protect it? So we are not talking only for the Northeast, for the transboundary animal disease, for, for the stats, our preparedness, our concentration or preparing of anything, it should be concentrated for whole country not only for the Northeast, but for Northeast, as it is having the poorest area, we need special attention. With this, sir, because of time concern, with the permission, and I may be allowed to conclude. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ji. Good presentation it was. Uh, thank you, but sir. the only thing is we have to you know, further work on the doables, what we should do. Northeast, we are we are actually working as a seal to the rest of the country. So far as transboundary diseases are concerned, so we well, it will be a sort of containment zone even if it enters. Our intention is to see that it doesn't enter. No disease enters northeast because from northeast it can go to the country. So if that seal we must provide, and we should therefore be equipped so very well that you know yeah. we can prevent the entry of the transboundary disease. That's, that's the real issue. Thank you very much. Quickly, we will take two more presentations in 20 minutes, 10 minutes each. Dr. Prasad, H. Prasad is here. Here, sir. You are here. Yes, you have to tell us only about the innovative ideas, not the routine one. Your, ti yes, your, sir. your title is Innovative Ideas for agri -preneurs. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, the chairman, uh, Professor Saha, Honorable Vice Chancellor CAU, and other uh, members present over here in the webinar. Uh, the topic of my today's presentation is innovative ideas having potential for agripreneurship in animal husbandry and veterinary. Uh, sir, my specialization is veterinary medicine. Uh, I'm heading the uh, Raftar Agri Business Incubation Center here in Mizoram, and I'm the PI and CEO of that. Uh, my uh, whole lecture is uh, classified into four sections, prelude, demand, means, and government of India support for the uh, entrepreneurship. You are, you are associated with AU, uh, Yes, sir. I'm associated with uh, AU, sir. Uh, AU is our knowledge partner, okay. and uh, we are in touch with uh, Dr. Tamuli and uh, other people okay, there okay. in your incubation okay. center. Okay. Uh, as we know that uh, the... Uh, agriculture, the, especially the agriculture growth in the year 2018-19 has been so poor. Uh, it is only 2.9% uh, compared to 6.9% in industry and 7.5% in service sector. Uh, so this uh, gives uh, or compels us to think about an alternative as to how the, uh, the share of agriculture can be increased. Uh, the GDP, again, the share of agriculture is only 15.4% industry 23% and service sectors uh, 61%. Uh, so here also it, in, it shows that uh, the agriculture sector GDP is very less and that's why our farmers are affected and their income is less. Yeah, the, uh, the, here the service sector contribution will fall down. Uh, yes, it, sir. It is expected to fall down to near 40%, you know, 20, yes, sir, one, yes. one percent decline in service sector. Yes, sir. Yes, Industry sir. sector also, there will be some decline. Right, sir, right. Okay. Uh, uh, 
so uh, whereas when we see the employment uh, uh, it is 43.21 percent in agriculture whereas in industry it is only 28.39 percent and in service sector 28.4 percent so here again the in though the agriculture sector is the most the highest employer uh, of the peoples but uh, again the the gdp percent is very less uh, so so the value chains which uh, which is the catalyst for the growth of agriculture and also for creating agripreneurship and which benefits almost all the uh, stakeholders so for this in order to achieve that uh, or make uh, give a momentum to the agriculture sector uh, uh, it, it needs commercial farming and uh, other than that food processing has to be taken up cold storage chain system has to be developed uh, mixed crop and livestock farming or integration of farming has to be taken up dairy farming has a good scope and i think in northeast i think thing we are lagging behind we need to do a lot of work on this poultry farming uh, is gradually coming up but when we talk about the uh, layer birds the egg production there here in the northeast region it is still very less and uh, that is why all these sectors needs to focus to be focused on and this can be done only with the agripreneurs so as far as the demand is concerned uh, with the urbanization of population of the whole country uh, the demand is increasing in the uh, urban uh, urban areas uh, and uh, for that especially in, in in regards to the livestock sector a uh, demand for milk products is very high because the urban population is quite conscious of uh, the nutrition level the nutrition health condition of uh, their health and that is why the demand for packed uh, dairy products and processed uh, milk products is coming up so in order to meet that or in order to come to the level of demand uh, the supply needs to be increased and that can be only done through agripreneurship or uh, uh, what do we call it commercial farming so in commercial farming what are the different components which plays an important role the the germplasm the livestock germplasm has to be superior and when we talk about life, uh, uh, superior love, uh, uh, germplasm it it may vary from region to region depending upon the demand the location uh, the climatic conditions and all so that okay, has to be no, taken up can go to the next slide okay sir uh, the feed, the feed and fodder again plays an important uh, role so okay, okay sir yeah. the housing to be take improved mm -hmm. uh, so as we we were talking and listening to the other speakers uh, we are deficient in the life uh, the feed and uh, this uh, the new technology or we can it is, we can say it's not that new but still has to be done uh, more of introduction in the northeast region a uh, complete feed block which has got advantage that uh, the a lo uh, lot of raw material is available and here the other ingredients food ingredients or uh, feed ingredients can be incorporated and that can be best utilized so this can be taken up as an industry small scale industry where an agripreneur can start up the things and thereby it can be readily available to the uh, uh, farmers or to the commercial farmers specifically uh, so agripreneurship is nothing but uh, it is entrepreneurship in agriculture and entrepreneurial spirit is characterized by innovation and risk taking and this is an essential part essential part of nation's ability to succeed in an ever changing and increasingly competitive global marketplace and the government of india is also focusing on it innovations starts up and make in india program and under this this has got a lot of potential uh, dairy sector uh, though india is the second largest producer of milk which produces around 160 million tons of milk uh, per annum uh, with uh, 75 million dairy farms dairy farms Uh, which uh, uh, for, uh, making a uh, costing around some 30 million dollars uh, but when we see that the most of the 81% of our farms are unorganized farms or units and uh, the government of india has uh, in order to emphasize on that to improve on uh, dairy farming especially the indigenous breeds of cattle their conservation their multiplication breeding kam uh, denu project has been started in the year 2019 with uh, funding of around 500 rupees crores and uh, in that one the government has given an emphasis on cow dung and cow urine cow urine startups where there is 60% funding so this an entrepreneur can take over take take it up and this has got a potential for agripreneurship uh, then again the fertilizer we are talking about organic farming so um, farm manure the uh, fertilizer from the animal excreta and uh, pest repellent can be developed uh, which will also which can be also taken up and as an agripreneurship and uh, this will uh, uh, enhance the 
especially production and uh, breeding of uh, the indigenous breeds of cattle and their maintenance. Then installation of and sale of biogas plant. Uh, this can be also taken as an entrepreneurship, either as a manufacturer or a supplier, uh, or, or, or a uh, supplier and planter of both the uh, biogas plant. Uh, as, as you know, the production depends not only on the germplasm and the feed materials, the, 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 uh, the animal houses should be also uh, good enough or convenient and comfortable enough to have a, give an environment where the production can be optimized. So uh, it also depends, the animal housing will depend upon the society or the industry where the demand is. So quality products will be required. Environment uh, has also to be taken care of where the emissions, noise, light, uh, things have to be uh, taken into account and accordingly the housing system has to be developed. And then uh, the in, at advanced or high-tech housing system also has a, uh, a comfort of handling animals, impact on landscape. And uh, then the crew has in return uh, has a better uh, walking space, drinking, eating, and natural it's behavior. Okay, next slide. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so then at the same time, it also enhances the economy of the farmer where the input is less and the best of profitability can be made. Uh, these are uh, some of the photographs which shows uh, how the uh, uh, high-tech uh, dairy farms can be there, which where, they, there it, where it is labor efficient. At the same time, it is the animals uh, manure can be also best utilized for organic fertilizer. Uh, so uh, again, in this uh, uh, housing system, uh, earlier compost system of house or, or bedding material had been used. Now it has been shifted to, uh, to a straw system of bedding. Uh, these are uh, some... Uh, uh, photograph uh, sir, this has, of course, since it is for uh, the students or entrepreneurs, I have taken it from internet, sir, not uh, produced of mine. See, housing system these days, we know, we need under climate change scenario, yes, sir. a housing system which will Maintain the THI, temperature humidity index, in right. a cattle shed or a pig shed. Yes, you know, that, so that will give the comfort to the animal for optimum production. Right. You know, THI maintenance, temperature humidity index maintenance is an issue today. You know, all housing are to be done that way. Okay. Right, ah, sir. Next one. Okay, sir. And of course, uh, there are animal lovers who prefer to have a cow garden where there is sufficient area of land uh, where the animals can graze in the pasture land. They can come to their uh, shade and relax. And this, uh, again, it is from animal... Ideal situation. Yes, sir. Yes, in ideal situation. <clears throat> uh, so this is a free work uh, system of uh, feeding where the folders are given to the... Uh, are transported in a trolley to the area where the animals are there and they can access to the fodder, uh, which is uh, balanced. Uh, depending Problem on is in Northeast, we do not have this type of farm, except right. in very few. <laughs> yes, yes. And, uh, yes, and of course, uh, since uh, uh, okay. this program and is organized. Next one. Next one, next one. Okay, sir. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, is on. this is going on. This is going on. Yeah, the, this is going on. Hmm. Yes, sir. So only very little uh, egg production is there, especially table eggs. Uh, and so in the, especially in the Northeast region, as sir was saying that uh, uh, almost 30 lakhs eggs per day is utilized in Assam itself. And yeah. uh, it's some 40, 40 to 15 uh, lakhs of uh, uh, daily egg is coming to other North, Northeast states. So we are depending upon other parts of our country. So uh, here there is a lot of scape where the, our agrippineers can take up this high-tech farming and uh, this, uh, especially the care system where the hygiene, sanitation, maintenance is better, the disease control is better. So this way, our, if our uh, young entrepreneurs, agrippineers take up this one, I think we can enhance the production of uh, table legs in the Northeast region. Uh, similarly, of course, uh, uh, high tech goat farming, though the goat farming has been done in the, uh, has been tried there in the Northeast regions also, including Mizoram, but it has not come to the success level. Again, the reason behind is that uh, these animals are browsers and they, uh, and uh, agriculture uh, crops are being uh, uh, damaged. So the uh, one All of the internet photos you have taken. <laughs> Yes, sir. That's that's right. Uh -huh. So this is not a, this is not a part of my research work or like that. Uh -huh. this, uh, yeah. So that's why you have taken it from internet. Okay. Okay. So, Next one. Uh, yeah. So though India is the uh, largest uh, uh, exporter of uh, uh, chewan and mutton uh, to other parts of the world, uh, but uh, still there is a it huge is not largest of, exporter uh, of chewan. I mean, so chewan and mutton. <laughs> 
part of the region but uh, a special sort of packaging marketing and branding can be done at a smaller scale uh, whereby uh, some of the entrepreneurs will slowly uh, gradually come up for a, a larger production uh, or processing so commercial production of or packaging of uh, organic fertilizers this can be taken up agri business or agri clinic can be started commercial high tech dairy of course can be taken up poultry hatchery uh, is not much here in the hills of the northeast Uh, so these can be taken up and we along with the parent stock because most of the poultry birds or chicks uh, they come from the other parts of uh, the country especially the uh, west bengal kolkata and all so they, they here uh, there is a scope and agriculturists can take up custom hiring of agricultural machinery can be also taken up in small scale depending upon the area especially the equipments which is required for hill agriculture Uh, uh, the government, as you know, the government of India has sanctioned uh, uh, one of the centers uh, uh, in the College of Veterinary Science, which is uh, uh, Raktar Agri Business Incubator Center. Thank you, so, uh, <coughs> sir, sir. So we are here, sir. So anybody who is interested can come up, and we are not only giving uh, imparting information and in business ideas in uh, veterinary science or animal medicine. We are also taking up uh, oh, as a whole. Okay, Doctor Prasad, this is an interesting topic, particularly for the young entrepreneurs. Okay, yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Well, I think some participants are there. Yeah. Uh, shall there be any question? To... Uh, uh, yeah, if there is any, sir, uh, anything, sir, I will be happy to. So, in this uh, program, sir, we are giving a, a two-month training in which. Uh, uh, this I know. Okay. Yes, sir. Actually, yeah, I am. I, I am speaking all these things for those people. So, if they are students who are listening to it, and for them that. Uh, uh, I think it. that's why I said if they have any question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> So thank you so much, sir, uh, giving me a time to uh, speak here. Uh, this, this has become an issue, agri entrepreneurship, because you know what has happened. <clears throat> Now, lot many people have lost their job because of COVID. You know, right, sir. the, the yes. casual employees, you know, the workers who were working in industries. You know, many people have lost their jobs and they have come back home. Right. You know, <clears throat> from uh, say Maharashtra, Delhi, and all the places. Now there is a pressure on each state, particularly of northeastern region, because you know a lot many people from this region were working in different parts of the country in different capacities. Okay, they have now come back. So it it say now for example in Assam we had an un unemployment rate of eight percent. Okay, yes, pre COVID, yes. after COVID when we saw the unemployment rate has gone up to. Almost twenty-seven percent, eight percent to twenty-seven percent. Same will be the case with now. There is a question whether some of them could be fitted in agri sector. Now, agri sector also has certain capacity. Now, the kind of people who have come back <clears throat> from different parts of the country, they will not be pure agriculturist doing agriculture in the field. They will be interested to take up job post field, even you know, after the field. So, what sort of agri entrepreneurship, you know, uh, uh, could be, you know, suggested to them? In say, for example, right from the, you know, product leaves the, uh, you know, animal, yes. or the field, crop field. Yes. Sort of initial one is input supplier. One one could be the agri entrepreneur for input supplier. Could be, you know, seed. Could be fertilizer. Could be, you know, water. Could be machinery. Could be all all feed and all that kind of thing. You know how many could be uh, ab absorbed in that kind of thing. Then second category would be the processors. Processor category may how many we can you know feed in. Then you know other value addition will be another category. Marketing will be another category. So four or five categories within the agri sector. You know if we divide and try to find out depending on the production capacity of the state, each of the state. How many could be employed, and how many could be encouraged to become a green cleaner? You know, but it, it, that has to be seen. That's what I think this green cleanership has a you know it is going to become a very focal issue. How whether we can employ more people here or not. Anyway, thank you. Any other question? Thank you so much.
then last presentation. I'm sorry, Dr. Premjit Singh ji. Uh, I think it overshoot by more than half an hour. This is the last uh, thing, Dr. Uh, Himadri Saha from uh, Veterinary College, Impal. With you, I think we'll close down the chapter. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Am I audible? Oh, you are from COF Tripura, no? Yes, sir. I am from yeah. College of Fisheries Tripura, sir. Opportunity is for fishery based entrepreneurship. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot many, lot many opportunities. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, thank you very much, respected chairperson, uh, Dr. K. M. Bazur Barua, sir, and the uh, uh, honorable dignitaries uh, who are present on this uh, session, uh, especially. Uh, uh, Professor uh, M. Penji Singh, sir, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor R. K. Shah, sir, Dr. N. P. Shah, uh, N. P. Shah sir, uh, Dr. B. K. Das, sir, J. K. Jena, sir, Dr. Dilip Kumar, sir, Dr. Mamota Singh, sir. Uh, thank you very much for giving me, me an opportunity uh, for presenting a topic. And that is a very interesting topic, I think. And uh, I think I hope I will justify this presentation. And before starting this presentation, I, I, I just want to uh, say that uh, this presentation may hurt some uh, some 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 people uh, because uh, I am going to uh, I made this presentation basically for uh, students and uh, and and some part from faculties also for the academicians also. So if it hurts, please don't mind. Just to encourage the students why entrepreneurship is important. Uh, I made this presentation, and obviously the faculties and the academicians will also get benefited with uh, this presentation. If I am not wrong, so here we go. So the uh, topic, uh, what I am going to discuss is the opportunity. So I have divided this topic into two parts. So if you see the fisheries-based entrepreneurship development in any region, so uh, two parties: why and how. Why we will go for entrepreneurship development, and how we'll do. So we'll first we'll go to the why. So why why we need entrepreneurship. Now, when we say entrepreneurship, people, uh, you know, we are we are teaching so many students. We are teaching, uh, you know, uh, farmers and all. So whenever I ask students, so what do you want to be after this course and all, after this BFSC and all, they say, sir, we want jobs. We want jobs. Then uh, I thought, let's see why jobs is not important or entrepreneurship is required. So you know, there is a study is that around uh, we need, we spend 25 to 30 years of our life to just to get a degree, and to get a degree we spend. 12 lakhs, uh, you know, around 12 lakhs, okay, of our parents to get the degree. Now, in our present scenario after COVID-19, you can see that 23% people, uh, you know, the employment rate has increased from 7 to 8% to 23%. So that means uh, you are not going to get job. And then, uh, if you see that among the Indian students, 93% students are not knowing many opportunities. That means what? Uh, most of the students know only engineering, medicals, management, designing, computer applications, and all those things. Only 7% students know there is a scope in agriculture fields and, uh, and also so, uh, and related fields. So due to that, what is happening? The talents are not coming to our field. And when the talents are not coming to any field, that means uh, you cannot uh, expect. Hello? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah you are audible. Yeah. yeah, that means talents are not coming to your field, means you cannot expect a high growth in the field. Hello. Now, there is a data that in fisheries, uh, in, a, in a year, how many students are coming out? So it is a 2011 data. So now so many colleges has come. So I will say that around 1,000 students are coming out uh, from, you know, uh, from different colleges in fisheries field. But the data say that only 20% of the graduates can be employed. And 20% includes both the private sector and the uh, government sector. That means what will happen to the 80% of the students. So that is a very you know, dangerous situation. And now uh, due to COVID-19 and all, this percentage will be reduced and the number of unemployment will be increased. So that is the reason why you need to be focused starting from your uh, career that you need to become entrepreneur. Now, when I ask why jobs, so they say different reasons. So these are the five reasons which you'll get uh, to that, that uh, they say jobs are more secure, steady income, work less, fewer headaches, and then you can't lose home when you lose your job. So let's see, what is that? So what are the five reasons? And then if you see the reasons are there, if it's more secure, then obviously these are the all government organizations where employees are being fired, being removed, because uh, so you cannot say that jobs are secure. If you say, 
it's a steady income let's take uh, income of professor okay so please don't mind uh, i took examples of professor salaries i am also a part of this so but uh, to uh, you know to you know uh, to make it understandable by the students uh, i've just taken example so the professor salaries in india is how much it is around 15 lakhs per annum no we start uh, maybe it's not like 15 lakhs per annum but we on an average by the time you retired and by starting if you see the average salary is around 15 lakhs per annum there is rare exceptions that you are going to get a very high package you know this is the one person uh, that uh, mr raman he he get 10 lakh salary per month okay he is a net grid ceo and net grid you know is a related to intelligence and all so getting this job is also not so easy only one or two person is getting such type of uh, jobs you know in the government sector but uh, if you say i took the uh, uh, you know the concept of uh, uh, salary of professor because professor's uh, job is one of the highest paid uh, job maybe our uh, salary is more than the is officer what they get Uh, their grade pay starting grade pay is 5400 our starting grade pay is 6000 so assistant professor job is much better scientist jobs are much better but if you see the average annual income is 15 lakhs so if it is 15 lakhs what uh, our honorable uh, finance minister have said that the lowest strata of middle class has a income between rupees 6 lakhs to 18 lakhs that means you spend whole your life working for jobs and you cannot bring yourself from lowest middle class to higher middle class okay so uh, there is a you know as entrepreneurs means the uh, his name will always always come uh, bill gates uh, is world renowned so what he said is if you are poor born it's not a mistake if you die poor it's a mistake but what they don't say you have to understand they say your mistake is they have programmed you to be poor if you want to be a reach you want to you know change from middle class to higher class you cannot do that the system has been made like this how i will i will show you one conspiracy theory uh, how they have programmed us like that okay so so most of the institutes program if you see are framed to produce skill labor to work as salaried employees for us so that is the fact so you see if you are producing students students have two type one will go to government job another will go to industries the industries they will take them they will use them as a labor skill labor and they will earn money there is those who go to government job agricultural graduates they go and promotes agricultural uh, farmers the farmers produce more the farmer produce more farmer does not get that much rich but the produce from the farmers are taken by the industries and industries earn huge money so that is a huge you know the programs which has been set and there is a famous uh, Mm, quotation i would like to share uh, who he who can does and who cannot teach us and i i i really hate this quote and uh, now that is another point i would to say uh, i would like to say that uh, there is worthless in, in jobs and all but if it is so then today must be a monday is it not so it's not monday it's second saturday and we are working so work is also not less in any job okay if you say that there is a fewer headache that is also not there in every job you have to have your annual confidential reports and all and then if you say that you cannot lose home when you lose your job uh, but if you if you lose your uh, business you lose your house if it is like that but then you have to understand that uh, with a job can you really afford this type of houses you know everyone dreams of heavy, having a very good house and like this no so if you see a house of this may need you know 3 to 4 crores uh, you know 3 to 4 crores you know investment you know but annual income of professor as i told is 15 lakhs and if we if we serve for 30 years what will be the total money we are going to get after retirement or up to retirement that is around 4.5 crores and along the, along, with, along with that you add 30% tax and 18% gst anything you buy you have to pay gst so you can understand how much we have so we spend our whole life improving our lifestyle thinking of just converting changing from middle class to higher class we spend our whole life but ultimately it may happen that we are end up with something like this something like this maybe in the apartments we are happy and then maybe with some you know middle class cars we are happy so this is only for the students so you have to understand that you know you should not focus on the jobs rather you should focus on the uh, entrepreneurship so now second part is how you become entrepreneur so you just see if you google you know uh, how to become successful entrepreneur you get thousands of you know 
materials. So it is really no use uh, if if you study, uh, no one can become you know. Um, uh, entrepreneur by studying on that is one thing which i want to uh, mention that the hello am i audible yes yes yeah so you have to understand that uh, most of the startups you know people get motivated and they start business and they fail most of the startups fail because the main reason of failing in a startup is that they choose the something hello this is the only you know hot cake which is available at present scenario and which has huge market and you need to think in northeast already many speaker uh, have told that northeast is highly uh, is a place where you know most of the fishes are being consumed and there is a high demand that is the rank of different states so you know that is the thing so fisheries is one community where you can start startup so there are so many technologies are there in fisheries i'm not going to discuss all the technologies but the problem with the technology in the fisheries sector and in the northeastern states are most of the farmers are not having huge lands big big lands like the farmers having in the concentrate on such technologies which keep which use very small area but give good profit so one of the best technology it will be the intensive pond culture okay because if the intensive pond culture if you see and if you calculate how much they get produce so if you see a uh, average farmer of a northeastern region may have an area of 0.16 hectare so if it does the intensive uh, fish culture the net per uh, month profit will be around 28000 Okay, which which is not so uh, high, but okay, even though it is uh, add, uh, 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 option. Now the another option is uh, they can go for recirculatory uh, culture system. It is another uh, potential system, and we have estimated the economies. And if he, if a person does it in a very small area, you see. Uh, if he if he does it if he if he, if he culture only uh, uh, tilapia he can earn uh, around twenty five thousand per month from hundred meters square area so that those are some of the technologies even a person can go for hatcheries like uh, papda hatcheries and catfish eight thousand per month. The, the, say the, the operation will be of six months, okay? And with very minimum investment, the person can earn 1.28 lakhs per month. Then there are some, uh, some other opportunities, opportunities like, you know, uh, in uh, Northeast, it is blessed with so much of uh, ornamental uh, uh, fishes and around 83% of the uh, total ornamental, uh, 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 no, total fishes are of ornamental value. And if you see, if you consider a fish like this, Nanda Stendas, which has the international value of 49.5 rupees, if you convert it from dollar to rupees, now it will be more, the data was taken long back, it will be more now, even if you do that. And if you see in Tripura and Northeast, the production uh, is rate is very low and the area also is very low for a farmer. We have found that a farmer can increase the you know, income by many fold. If they increase, if the, if, if the farmer changes the species, the income increases to 9.5 poles. So there is only one fish. If we do this, the increase, the income changes to 80 poles. So we have to have a technology to do that, right? There is aquarium outlets a farmer can do. If any anyone is not having any you know lands and all, they can go for ornamental outlets and they can earn 12,000 per month. There is a scope for feed and properties. More than six crore market was there in Tripura in, in the year 2012 when I estimated. Now, 2020, the market will be much, much higher than this. So uh, another thing is that, you know, uh, we all talk about 
we export lots of fishes, but this data tells you that how much fishes we import. So when you say import, means we are importing fishes from outside. That means we are not producing enough. We have to produce more, okay? So uh, this is one thing. So that means we have a huge potentiality to do startups with fisheries. And that is, again, I told, told you that there is a uh, huge demand of fish. In Northeast, we get lots of fishes from Andhra Pradesh and neighboring countries. Uh, like Bangladesh, and then we get it from uh, this one, uh, West Bengal also. And there are some lorries are being used for transporting. If you see in Andhra Pradesh, the fish price of rohu is around 100 to 120 kg, but the local fish of same size will cost you 400 rupee a kilo. In this lockdown, the uh, katla price went to 1000 rupee kilo for 1200 rupee a kilo. So you can understand what is the uh, price of fish in uh, Northeast. Uh, and uh, if, if you see the economics, those trucks which are taking in the uh, fishes through, uh, through, you know, the trucks, the refrigerated vans or the trucks they're taking inside the uh, Northeast, per truck, they earn around 7 lakhs. Okay, you can understand. If the normal truck it is there, they're earning 2 to 3 lakhs per truck. And in Northeast, at, uh, you know, alone at Assam, 20 to 25 trucks enter daily. And these businesses are run by only two, three people, mm -hmm. two, three companies only. So you can understand, you can estimate the estimate the quantum of money they you know they, they earn with these businesses. Then we have a value-added products also, which uh, already so many speakers have told. And if you produce anything with the uh, bycatches and all, you know, the, the percentage profit is around more than 40%. The another opportunities for the upcoming graduates and all this that they, they can become consultant. I remember when I was working in Kakinada uh, for uh, training purpose, there was a person I met uh, whose name was Oshok. In the year 2007, he was earning more than 83,000 per month just giving by uh, uh, consult giving consultancy. So uh, okay. I told I told so many things about this, and this is uh, what I have done. Okay, this is Mamuni Ekor is a center which I founded uh, immediately after my graduation. So uh, I did catfish unit. I started uh, giving trainings. I started prawn units. I participated in fairs. I uh, even I had uh, uh, this ornamental fish unit and experts from College of Fisheries and the support from the College of Fisheries in the Central Agricultural University. We have done lots of things. I have supported mm -hmm. this uh, man. Uh, with this uh, ornamental uh, uh, unit at that time, he is to earn around 15,000 to 30,000 per month. Okay, just by, uh, you know, keeping an aquarium outlet. Uh, I help that fellow. But uh, when a person is developing uh, any entrepreneurship, so he has to learn one thing, that this person, he, this picture tells so many things. You know, this person, uh, he, he, he developed uh, the uh, respected uh, uh, Dhirubhai Ambani Saab, who has stated uh, from 0 to 100, this man took 0 to 1000, but this man brings 0 to uh, 100 to 0. So you have to understand that uh, entrepreneurship is not an easy task and no one can give you. We have to develop insight from you. Okay. So what is the opportunities we have? So this is for the students. So you, I, I just took a comparison of two things. You know, you have a top of an academician here and here is a top entrepreneur. You have to see that the top uh, academician, the age is around 59 and the top uh, entrepreneur age is around 64. So they are not that much uh, age difference are there. So my question is, comment which profession you would like to follow, A or B, just this is for the students, okay, just to motivate them. So uh, let's discuss one conspiracy and pardon me if I'm wrong, okay, the conspiracy I wanted to discuss because it is very important for us. You see, uh, as a poor country, uh, you know, India is a very, uh, you know, poor country and we're developing, okay, and we take lots of taxes from the general public. These taxes go to funding agency. Funding agency give it to the finest brain of our country who work day and night just to get get good papers and awards, okay. Uh, we work, really, I, you know, I, I just uh, appreciate, I, I just want to congratulate all the scientists. Now, what is the conspiracy is there? I just want to tell you, okay, uh, I, you may not agree with that, but just it's my idea, okay. Uh, pardon me if I'm wrong. See, after the research, the finest brain comes up with result. Now, if you have a result, you have two things. You have a paper or a patent, right? Now, concentrate in the paper. What happens to the paper? Paper goes to the international journals, right? Because uh, international journals means high impact factor and all kinds of 
uh, you know, uh, ACRs or any applications we apply, uh, everyone looking looks for uh, international channels with high impact factor, right? Now, when we are doing this, what is what we are actually doing? You just see, uh, you see, experts in the field spend valued time to review papers. Okay, the publisher sends paper to the reviewers. Reviewers do the review and then editor do the editing without any monetary benefits benefits from those uh, publishers and then we just get happy with the certificate that we we are editor or we are a reviewer okay then what is actually happening you see the lcbr profit okay lcbr profit pro in 2019 is around 3.6 billion dollar okay 6 3.6 billion dollar and you will be astonished to know that even the reliance revenue is uh, reliance geo revenue is not crossing 3.6 billion dollar it is only around 2.6 billion dollar so that is a very big conspiracy which is happening and the patents if you see if you sell a patent as a scientist the patents will be purchased with 10 lakhs 20 lakhs or whatever it may be and then uh, how much percentage a scientist get okay the maximum profit are made by the industrialist okay so that is a conspiracy and we i think we should be local and vocal as the honorable prime minister already told so we have to you know we have to we, we should not drain our resources to international publishers okay we should not uh, publish our papers to the international publisher rather than as we are following nas ratings so nas should uh, you know uh, start uh, releasing some journals which have already uh, high you know uh, 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 this one uh, nas rating and benchmark quality they should be maintaining and then we can you know uh, save <clears throat> also money then coming to uh, okay i i just skip that so what but are the supports i think you, you have done a good job already i can you so two minutes sir, just two minutes two minutes sir. so what are the supports so we have to look around you see everything we see around okay everything has been developed by a scientist academician or a researcher but most of them are poor so we have to start thinking Desh Badal Rai. Why Desh Badal Rai? You see, that is a recent thing which I, I, I came across and the National Innovation and Startup Policy 2019 for students and faculty. Because we have to understand that all the students in the higher education, the faculty in the higher education, they are the cream of the nation. They are the best talents in the nation. Okay. So they can do, they can develop technologies and they can develop the enterprise. So to support that, this policy has changed so many things. So any innovations, should be related should be connected to enterprises and then it should be have a financial success so any faculty under this policy they can start uh, you know the uh, the uh, the enterprises the startups they can start along with their job even they can go for uh, you know sabbatical leave unpaid leave casual leave only for working on startups and come back okay even there uh, you know the important thing is that institution should consider allowing use of its resources to faculty student staff wishing to establish startup as a full time effort the seniority and the other academic benefits during such period may be preser preserved for such staff or faculty so even though if you are going for a leave your seniority is not going to be hampered Okay, so that is a change, you know, the Desh Badal Rai and the thinking of the Prime Minister and the team is really, you know, appreciable. So there are so many other things, the students entrepreneurs should be allowed to sit for examination, even if their attendance is less than the minimum pressed permissible percentage with due permission from the institute. So that means what? The country now wants revenue, okay? You have to have technology, you have to have businesses. So there are so many other, you know, provisions they made under this, and. Uh, there are so many other uh, schemes, Raftar, uh, there are National Fisheries Development Board, NAVARD we have, and then our Honorable Prime Minister said that I see startups technology and innovations are exciting and effective instruments for Indian's transformation. So, so I just, uh, before concluding, I just want to say that less work as an intrapreneur, uh, in, uh, less, less work as an intrapreneur or intrapreneur. So intrapreneur is a new term. I think everyone should go and see what is entrepreneur it's a very interesting term and or else the day are not so far because uh, they, that is a huge competition coming up you know uh, so uh, so i told no that uh, charity should begins at home so i want to promote entrepreneur so if i don't begins from my home then how it is possible so mamuni ecosystem center which i founded during my student life 
have been overtaken by my parents and my family members. Now they are running this business and this business has gone to a higher level. Now it's become online, okay? This business, are not only in Tripura, they are catering the services from all over the country. And recently they got support uh, from the RKBI. And uh, this is another student example. He One day he came to me and he told me, sir, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Then I, I gave him suggestion and then he started doing another enterprise that is the Aqua Hub where he organizes all India mock tests by, you know, uh, for the students who are appearing for the competitive exams. And this is, yeah. Okay, okay, Ji. Thank so you. With this, uh, I just want to finish, sir. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody has any question to Dr. Saha? Anybody? Okay. It was a it was a good presentation. I must compliment Dr. Saha. You have done a really good research. Thank you, sir. Very good research, and your presentation was good. <clears throat> uh, congratulations for Thank that. You. But our main problem is what, you know, when we identify one sector, we attach so much of importance to it that other sectors are forgotten. You know, right. say you say 20% employable graduates we are all producing. Whose fault it is? Whose fault? Is it not the fault of the persons who produces this graduate? Okay, now the thing is, if you invite everybody to entrepreneurs, imagine a situation everyone has become entrepreneurs and what will happen? Okay, what we need in an institute, in a, in a university, we need to have three, four prone strategy. One, so a group of students might be interested in science. So you make a group science ready student, maybe 10%, 15%. Okay, one is self ready student. One group, those who, who can be supported well by their parents, you know, and, and has other means. Self-ready students, you make another group who will go into all this entrepreneurial thing and all that. And then an, yet another group, you make say service-oriented group who will join the government job and all that, you know, everything, banking sector, this sector. How, oh, so if, what I want to mean, now, entrepreneurship thing has come up. It does not mean all of us will become entrepreneurs. No, it is not possible. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, we we yeah. cannot be entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, possible. we cannot lose sight of the importance yeah. of other sectors as well. But yeah, fishery sector, you have lot many opportunities to invite startups. You know, and many of them have come also. Many of them. But, but the kind of picture, so if one can earn 1.25 lakh rupees, you know, per month, per seeing fishery, then why should I be doing a job? Isn't it? Right, you know, imagine right. when thousand people will be into that, you know, what will be the condition? You know, so the whole thing is we have to be very selective. Actually, here the market intelligence thing come in. How much we need? You know, how much we need to produce more? And how many entrepreneurs we need for that? It, it should be all calculation based, you know, strategy. But uh, your your presentation was definitely very good, and a lot many people will be attracted to that, you know, because we need intellectuals as well. You know, in addition to entrepreneurs, we yes, need sir. policy makers, thinkers, you know, those kinds of things are also. Oh, sir, uh, my point was that uh, we we are in the conspiracy, sir. Suppose a pepper example I gave you, sir. No, it is the not paper, conspiracy. It is actually not conspiracy. You said that conspiracy. But, uh, yes, yeah. patent is mine. Okay. Patent is yeah. mine. I, I and I give a value to this. You know, yes, sir. you are you are actually giving a value to your own patent. It could be one lakh, it could be fifty lakh. And there is a procedure who might have understood the value of your patent. Accordingly, he will give you that 50 lakh rupees. Rest of it, what happens, it is his thing because he is an established industry. You know, to yes, now yes. with that patent, or else what you will have to do? You will have to take that patent, go out, utilize that patent. You know, well, yes. then you, you have to become completely an industrialist, isn't it? Yes. So there is a close yes. linkage chain, one after the other. Yes. So, 
yeah, that's why this policy has came sir recent policy sir that's why that the the government has given the opportunity that to somebody may not want to sell their patent because they may yeah, not that's get fine. Good then, then he should yeah. go out with their with his patent and pursue yeah. the product you know that then yeah. produce marketable goods out of the patent yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. then you become a yeah. totally different entrepreneur nobody had stopped you earlier also from that you know because no, no, now with job also sir with job that policy says with job you can do yeah with job earlier also sabbatical yeah. was there you know tell me in our university there was sabbatical i encourage people nobody do sabbatical uh -huh. only few people do only to write one or two books not for entrepreneurship okay, okay. now uh -huh. the basic thing is let us now honestly talk about that. how many of our people know how to do business you know how many yeah, of our uh, huh, how many of our people are really so very highly skilled that they can master over it how many of our people you know that, that is, is also a problem, sir. that is also a reality yeah. which is why it has not come up so <clears throat> anyway it, it will be a long debate already we are very late so very late thank you now a uh, number one dr premjit ji i'm so sorry for uh, keep you sitting beyond the beyond the allotted time which was up to 5:30 uh thank you very much for giving me the opportunity dr premjit we just like my brother we have been <coughs> knowing each other for last thank i you, think sir. 30 years uh, so very good to be sitting with you then aisa Uh, I have my whole association with ISA. They have been doing a lot of good jobs, but this time the participants number, as Dr. Jena had also said, was not encouraging compared to the other one you had somewhere else. May I say it is not very encouraging the participation. It is because the discussion is about notice. From here itself, if we take a clue, you know, because not very many people are interested. So this has to change. this has to change and it is up to us how we attract more number of people to come here to understand and to to also be benefited with the kind of opportunities the region has that is that is number one thank you uh, hopefully tomorrow also you will have a very good session without taking much time i i thank you sir. wish you all a very good night and stay free be happy thank you very much all the speakers my special thank thanks you. Okay. thank you so thank, thank you very much sir for conducting nicely this technical session on that is uh, animal science and uh, fisheries and uh, because uh, even though it is a uh, long what to say discussion but it is very much uh, essential also sometimes in the context of the nordician region and our program coordinator i also thank program coordinator mr tapas paul he will give the vote of thanks but before that actually since this is the covid period and it is it, it is our moral responsibility from the aisha as well as university to give the moment of bouquet but it is with us but we cannot give at this stage when the lockdown is open sir i i will bring sir sir thank you <laughs> not 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 needed even this discussion is the moment Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. I take this opportunity to thank chairperson of this session, Honorable Dr. K. M. Vajrabharuwa, sir, former Vice Chancellor of Assam Agriculture University, for his gracious presence and words of wisdom with us. I also thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, uh, Professor M. Premji Singh, sir, for he being with us from the morning to till now and always guiding us. Thank you, sir. my sincere gratitude to keynote speaker honorable ddg fisheries dr jk jaina sir for his kind presence and giving a comprehensive and insightful lecture on the present status and future opportunities of fisheries and animal science in northeastern region i keep on record my indebtedness to all the respected speakers dr bk das sir professor rk shah sir dr np sahu sir professor ak samant sir professor tk datta sir professor h prasad sir and dr himadri shah sir for enlightening us on different future researchable issues and the prospect of entrepreneurship development in northeastern region i also thank all the other present dignitaries uh, dr dilip kumar sir uh, sir is here so i would like to uh, pay my sincere gratitude to you also sir 
and also i would like to thank all the reporters of this session and the participants for your active support so sir this session is uh, it's here and we will uh, again continue tomorrow at 10:30 with our third session sir thank you good night Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah, thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Asis. Thank you, sir, for giving time. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Madri, thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.